Hey, 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 it's Christine Hulu. So today I have some of an important topic that I think needs to be touched on. Passion. So passion is what drives us as artists and as creative people. It It's what inspires us to do our work and to continue doing it. It's what we love and it's what we love to do. So we have a passion for it. But passion can sometimes be harmful to us. Whether we like it or not, it can be kind of harmful. Um, so we see this a lot with passion projects. And I think a great example to bring up with this is Yandere Dev and Yandere Simulator. So Yandere Simulator is just the pinnacle of a passion project. And we can see just digging deeper and deeper and just getting hung up on it. So pretty much passion projects are think things that people have an extraordinary amount of passion for and they want to get it done. They want to do it, but it's, they keep, it never gets to where they want it to be because they have this perfect image in their mind and they never really want to finish it. So we see this kind of with Holly Brown a bit with Purgatory, but she's kind of overcome that. She has brought it from falling into the pit of passion project failure with purgatory. We see her having multiple goes with purgatory and kind of not wanting to start it because she wants it to be perfect, which is something that happens a lot with passion projects. And that's kind of something I've experienced myself with uh, my project Null and Void, which I have started and I will start uploading very soon online webtoon. I'm nearly done with the first chapter. But passion projects often fall into somewhat of a rut. You have so many ideas, and you want it to be perfect. And we see this a lot with Yandere Dev. He has a really good idea, I think. I think it's a good idea. I think it could be a fun game if it wasn't run by him. <laughs> uh, he's got a wonderful idea, wonderful characters and everything. I almost feel like someone could take this idea and kind of be inspired by it and make their own game that would turn out so much better, but he's fallen in love with the characters and he may not have the skills to do it as we see with him using the Unity assets and having problems with programming, even, in, even getting Tiny Build on to help him. I've been following this project since nearly the beginning, so I've become pretty invested in it and I do know a lot about it and I've seen kind of this rut he's gone into and just, he wants this game to be perfect. It's his passion. And while some, passion is something that drives us, passion is something that can stop us. Passion is a very strong emotion and sometimes we can be blinded by that. We don't see that what we're doing might not be great or we might not see that we might need to accept help from others at points. We see this with Yandere Dev not exactly wanting help and kind of pushing Tiny Build away after he tried to help him and not really hiring people we see. He wants to do all the code himself, all the everything himself, but we aren't one trick ponies so we can't exactly do that. And I'm willing to admit that I can try and do stuff like this too. I want to do, I get ideas and then I want to do everything. I want to do it all by myself, which can be very difficult. We see in the comic, in the comic world, with comics especially, with professional American comics, we see writers, we see artists, and we see like storyboarders. We see all of these people, and there's many people who make comics. Which is kind of the interesting thing I feel about webcomics, is that it's one person doing the story, doing the art, doing the everything. Which is a lot of work for one person, which is why big comic companies like Marvel and like DC split these jobs up among other people. Just to make it easier and make 
the story work better and go along quicker. Uh, we, as people, we all have our own individual skills and our own individual talents and things that we may naturally may come naturally to us and we may not be naturally more inclined to. Um, while I do believe that everyone can be a Buddhist and can learn art with enough, let me say it again, passion. <laughs> if you have enough passion for the, the thing that you want to learn, I think you can definitely go and learn it. While it may be a weakness of yours, you can overcome that. And we see this with a lot of people. Anyone can draw, I think. Um, I took a drawing one class a couple years ago. And while half the class ended up dropping by midterms, the people who weren't very good at art and knew they weren't very good at art and stuck through it, I was so proud of them. It was really amazing to kind of see the growth in these people who may not have even had an interest in art at the beginning, but they decided to stick through with this class to the end, even though it was a really hard and a really serious class. It was definitely not an easy A class, and they stuck with it, so I think with maybe that might not be the passion part. Passion needs to almost be partnered with something. Partner needs, or it needs, passion needs to be partnered with something to keep us going, to keep us engaged, and to just keep going through it, and to work to the end rather than to work on perfecting and work on continuously adding and adding and adding ideas and everything. I think passion is something that is important for us to have, but I also think passion is something that is necessary for people to control, which we don't see with the dilemma of passion projects where they fall into development hell, which Yandere Dev or Yandere Simulator has been in for pretty much since the beginning. The main it doesn't even have the main goal yet. It's been in sandbox mode for about three years now, I wanna say. And while sandbo sa the sandbox mode can be fun from time to time, there's no goal. One thing, one, my best, the best piece of advice I've ever heard is if you're ever going to do a story, you have to know what's going to happen. You need to know what's going to happen. Um, something that can help you out is the beat sheet. I can actually probably find this and link it for you. I actually found this from another YouTuber who writes books. <laughs> um, I really do like following them and hearing what they have to say and everything. But yeah, um, it's really important to know where you're going so you don't get stuck and ramble on and on and on and on and on. You gotta have an end goal and you gotta work to that end goal. And once you have like the main kind of line of where you want it and you have everything kind of planned out among that rather than planning it out as you go, which kind of seems to be what Yandere Dev has been doing with his rivals and everything is he's got the end goal but he doesn't have the in-between parts and he's just been kind of coming up with that as you go like all of the rival elimination parts while he was coming up with rival eliminations he wasn't really thinking about kind of like the interactions that the main character had would have with this rival which I think is really important. You need to know the important beats, which is why the beat sheet is very helpful. You need to know, okay, what is just, even if you're not super sure, you just need to generally know this is gonna happen here. Like if a character death is going to happen, or in the case of Yandere Simulator, if an elimination um, opportunity is gonna happen. You've gotta be like, it's gonna be here in this place, in the school building, and Osana is going to be doing this. Which I think would be very helpful for Yan Dev if he had kind of set this up before going in and trying to develop the game. If he had kind of this end goal and kind of in-between goals 
which is kind of what helps push you through. Having goals is important. Having goals is something that helps your mind keep going to something. Passion can burn out. Passion burns hot, but passion doesn't keep burning, which is why it needs to be partnered with something else. And I think something that can help keep you going and invested into something is having goals. So with this, you need to set small goals for yourself. And every time you achieve those, you get, it kind of like activates the reward system in your brain and it gives you good feelings. You're like, oh my gosh, I did this. <laughs> so that's kind of what I'm trying to do with my comic right now. Um, I've been working on it for this past month. Um, I, I almost have the first chapter done. <laughs> Obviously, I've been pretty busy with my dog days of summer um, and Mermay for last month when I think I just barely started it, uh, maybe? <laughs> I don't know. But I've been kind of working through all the panels and kind of trying to think of what to do, which is kind of where I'm getting hung up is like the little minute details in between. But I'm almost done. I have the first chapter all drafted out. And my goal for this month, which ends today, Saturday, is to finish this first chapter. So you need to set little goals for yourself. So every small goal you reach kind of ignites your passion more and keeps you going by rewarding yourself, per se. Wow, I achieved something. Setting goals, I think, is what helps us kind of get through life. It's kind of like going back to the kind of video game concept, like little side missions. While they aren't exactly important to the main plot, completing side missions is kind of re is rewarding in its own way. It may not help you complete the story, but it keeps you invested in the game and keeps you wanting to move forward. When you aren't able to do anything in a game or achieve anything, you get bored of it and you want to put it down. Which is, again, the problem with Yandere Simulator. There's no goal. There's nothing to keep the player invested. And while Yandere Dev may have some funky goals of his own on what he wants to get done with this project. He doesn't have goals for the audience. So there's nothing to keep them invested. There's no goals or achievements for them to complete to be invested. So yeah, that's kind of all I have to say on the topic of passion and passion projects. If you have something that you have a lot of passion for, don't let it be a passion project. If you're gonna do it, do it. You stick to it. You don't go back and continue to work on it. If you have that first chapter done, even if it doesn't look perfect to you, if you have it done, keep moving forward. You don't go back and you don't keep getting hung up over everything or else your ship is going to sink. It's going to fail and it's not gonna work out. You're not gonna get anywhere. So that's kind of my advice with it. Um, I hope you found this video interesting. I hope you found it helpful. If you want to comment, comment right down below. Anything you want, leave a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe if you want to see more of my content, hear more of my talkings and ramblings or whatever. Uh, hit the bell icon if you want to be notified every time I upload. I also share on Twitter every time I upload. Um, that's the only one that's probably not linked in the description just because I don't use it too much anymore, but if you're interested in checking out my Twitter, let me know so I can work that link into my description. But yeah, um, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you again next time, guys. Bye!